everybody. Hi, guys. Well, from eh, a little less smoky Salt Lake City, Utah. It's Thank God I'm Atheist. The podcast. I'm Frank Feldman. And I'm Dan Beecher. And coming up on the show today, Dan, we're going to be talking about vaccine mandates, which they seem to be coming down the pike. Oh, thank uh, God. And religious exemption. Yes, indeed. Uh, the Lord told me not to get vaccinated. <laughs> Because that's so, what that's what the Lord does. Yes. Oh, uh, God. So we're going to talk about that and yeah. what a ding dong idea that is. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, you know what? Uh, it, listen, if you're bathed in the blood of the of Jesus Christ, <laughs> the great shielding blood, the great powerful blood of Jesus Christ, I find that so weird. More we Mormons, we didn't grow up with that all, all of that blood imagery, all that. No. It's gruesome, you guys. It's really rough. What yeah. what are you doing? Anyway, we like to think of Jesus as alive. As yeah, we don't focus on his death like grim disgust like 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 you <laughs> sick de fox death obsessed <laughs> perverts. Yeah. All right, well Dan, yeah. <clears throat> I have a, a story that has delighted me for the ever since i first read it oh it's been days now and i keep musing over it oh i'm uh, well um, now i'm excited i'll get to <laughs> muse so uh, we're all familiar with the with lent right uh, sure uh the, the 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 season uh the christian season between what is it good friday and easter right where it's yeah, 40 that's days a, that's a, or, or yeah of, some, of, yeah of abstaining Typically from something. No, it's right? it's not Good Friday. Good Friday is when right, well, that's right, right before, before Easter. Fat it's Tuesday. Fat Tuesday. That's right. That's right. Marty. You Bra. knew it was one of those days of the week. <laughs> There's so many. It's hard to keep track. Yeah. How do you, how does he how does one even try? Yeah. Anyway, um, yeah. So it's it's a tradition, right? To like abstain from something. To give up uh, something yeah. that, that 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 you like. Yeah. And so this is this is the story of a woman in Russia who uh, was abstaining from uh, meat products uh, and any kind of animal product. And, and this, oh. is, this is something that she'd been doing for 16 years. Uh -huh. uh, sure. I guess it's a 30-day fast, not 40. Uh, whatever. Apparently in Russia, they, can, they, 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 they shave off a 10-day ten, ten period. Just is to... it Ash Wednesday? Where does that come in? No, that's, that's I don't another, know. Oh my god, they're so it's so hard to keep. The track. liturgical calendar is too tricky, you guys. We didn't grow up with it. No. So that's that's yeah, it's hard to keep track. But nonetheless, um she uh is suing McDonald's um because she saw an advertisement that was just too alluring. <laughs> that she broke Lent. Oh my god. To eat a burger. Oh my god. <laughs> Listen, I know that life in Russia can be bleak. <laughs> and yeah, I eat McDonald's. I'm not going to get judgy about that. But man, it, their advertising cannot be that good. I don't know. Somebody deserves an award. So, um, yeah, that's right. Actually, this should be their new advertising campaign. As somebody right. who just, who cannot help themselves, who cannot resist it, that they'll, that they'll risk going to hell. That's right. To that's have right. a burger. Uh, she says... When I saw the advertising banner, I could not help myself. Um, the, apparently, the the water the, it was such a mouth watering ad that featured a cheeseburger and chicken McNuggets <laughs> side by side. Uh, that she uh, she went she visited and bought a cheeseburger right away immediately. Oh. So she is suing for moral damages for alleged con and. Uh, uh, consumer protection violations uh, <laughs> and insulting her religious feelings. The whopping sum that she's suing McDonald's for one thousand rubles, or the or roughly thirteen dollars and sixty cents. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I guess the price of a burger. Like, what is six, thirteen sixty? Like, yeah, I know. That's... What, maybe she had a few burgers. I don't know. Maybe maybe the burgers are really expensive. In you Russia. know what though? There's a brilliance to this because if she sued for um, you know a million rubles or whatever, ever you know a court would just throw it out or whatever. Right. But if she sues for third, I mean that seems low no matter what. But like. I feel like the lesson here is if you're going to do a really egregiously stupid lawsuit, mm. give them something to like, just say, 
okay, I'll just throw you a few bucks. Right. You know what I mean? Let's just stop this silliness. I'll give you the 1350. Just shut up. <laughs> well, apparently the Russian Orthodox Church has chimed in and they said that she should go to confession instead of to court. Yes. <laughs> well, I mean, that's the obvious truth here is that the whole point of Lent is that you're supposed to be tempted yeah. and you're supposed to triumph over that temptation. Right. Like, that's the entire idea. She Which, must really like burgers regularly. Right? Like, to just get a hankering like that. Like, you know, it, look, there's only so much borscht you can take <laughs> before you need a burger. For me, it would be sausage McMuffin with egg. Yeah? Yeah. That's, that's, that's the, a great product. That's the savory treat yeah. of choice. Oh, my God. You and Andrea, my wife, would uh, can commune on that. You guys should oh. be going to breakfast to McBreakfast We should regularly. be meeting at McDonald's for breakfast. <laughs> oh, listen. Andrea would be so on board with that idea. <laughs> You're making a joke. I'm telling you, Body. she would be <laughs> excited about that. Really? Yeah. Oh, we could have our little mick cafe. Yeah, there you go. Uh, whatever they. Oh my god! Yeah, no, I. It's it's a, it is a true weakness. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Um, I am going to give an update on a a there a lawsuit that has been ongoing. Uh, since for for well over six years now, uh, which is. There was a law, so there was a lawsuit that we actually know someone who was involved in this lawsuit. There was yes. a lawsuit against uh, an organization that was uh, that that was basically promising that they could ungay you. Oh, it, it was yeah. <clears throat> it was an organization called Jonah, mm -hmm. which is actually Jews offering new alternatives for healing, mm. and uh, the alternatives for healing. I don't know if you know this, but an alternative to healing is not healing. So mm. I don't think that's what they meant, but, uh, but I think that's what was happening because they were, yeah, they were doing what is, uh, known as reparative therapy, Jesus, uh, curing people of their gayness. It turns out that doesn't work. Right. It just screws people up. It just injures people. Yeah. Uh, sometimes very, very badly. Yeah. Yep. Um, and so there was, so, you know, they, a group sued. Uh, including uh, someone that we know who who was subjected to this, who mm -hmm. subjected himself to this, yeah. I think. Um, he wasn't Jewish either. No, no. But uh, but the Mormon, all the Mormon groups had sort of stopped doing it. So he went, I think. Oh, so he went that... to this group okay. uh, in New Jersey. Okay. Um, anyway, they lost. Uh, r rather, Jonah lost. Uh, our friend and, and his co-plaintiffs prevailed. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, in that lawsuit um and then at, and the thing was that the ruling was really interesting the ruling in in that case this was in 2015 mm -hmm. the settlement uh included a clause that basically so it awarded the plaintiffs 3.5 million dollars with a caveat which was that <clears throat> uh that they wouldn't have to pay that they would only have to pay uh, we, what we now know is four hundred thousand, mm. which is a lot less than three point five million. That's an interesting caveat. But if they fuck, if they fucked around and tried this again, oh. they would be on the hook for the full three point five. Oh, interesting. Oh, well, okay. Jonah changed its name to Jifga. The Jewish Institute for Global Awareness, which, uh, shut up, that's not what you're trying to do. And JIFGA... <laughs> These people are, they're good at, the, at naming their organization. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They uh, they just switched it up, but they still, the you know, the two main proprietors, Arthur Goldberg and Elaine Burke, still start would refer people to reparative therapists. Oh, okay. uh, and and gotcha. and so like that's that's a no no. That was a breach of that or, or initial thing. Mm. So they went back in. You know, they got emails proving it. Went back in and said, okay, well, we want the full three and a half million then. Wow, because they're still fucking doing it. Yeah. So they dove back in, and the court just uh, ruled that indeed they're fuck ups, and now they're on the hook for the whole three and a half million. Wow. Yeah. Wow. 
So there you go. Well, uh, yeah. Cause uh, uh, some financial harm. Yeah, I think <laughs> that's, I, uh, that's I feel like thing. they needed to feel it hard. Yeah. Uh, and and mm. hopefully this send, sends chills down the spine of anybody who's trying to, to do no, this kidding. kind of disgusting thing. Wow. Because it, it really is. And people, it's, it is genuinely disgusting. Like yeah. their methodologies were A, just stupid on their face. Right. Like one of their things, one of the, the reparative therapies, excuse me, one of the reparative therapies that they did was have gay men strip naked in front of each other. Mm. And then like, you know, I don't know, do something. But like frolic, you're not going to ungay someone. By letting him see another dude naked, like that's uh, no, it normalizes the the the, the <laughs> male body, right? And I and honestly, I think probably you were punished severely if you got a boner or like that sort of thing was, like I'm guessing that there was that sort of thing. I know oh, that they also did, um, like they would have you beat up your mother in effigy sort of thing good lord oh because she didn't cut the apron strings because yeah that's that's where gay comes from Mm -hmm. you've got an overbearing mother Mm -hmm. and you've got a what's absentee father is that what it is Yeah, something like that yeah that's obviously what causes gayness because nobody's ever come out of a normal household gay that's never happened Mm -hmm. anyway yeah well and and also that formula seems like there would be a lot more gay men than there are as well. Yeah. Um, if that's all it took. Right. Uh, all right, Dan. I've got the story of an imam. Okay. In Norway. Oh. Who uh, was the director of a uh, sort of a, a, a Muslim group that, um, that sort of l- tried to, to engage in and lead interfaith dialogue projects okay um a a, a noble thing right this is i got no problem with that uh uh, the the the, it's the minhaj ul quran is the name of the uh international muslim organization um it's considered typically moderate uh it's geared toward outreach like the kind that just talked about um well they have um suspended an imam of theirs who was a director of a, uh, a a local branch, uh, his name was Noor Ahmad Noor, and <clears throat> the reason that they have suspended him <laughs> is because they found out that online he was calling for the death of Jews. <laughs> oh, broadly, Noor, <laughs> Noor, you're doing it wrong. Apparently, man. he'd been posting for years. Uh, oh. posting horribly anti-Semitic uh, remarks. Um, in uh, 2019, he wrote that Jews put the world in danger and it is, quote, necessary to kill them. Oh, my God. Um, you know, it, now, you know, he has released a statement now uh, to the Norwegian media. Uh, he says, my posts were published in frustration over attacks in Gaza. Uh, innocent children and women were killed. My criticism and frustration should have been directed at the regime. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And not against a group of people. I apologize. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> You're correct. Uh, if you want to get mad at the Israeli regime, yes. then Sure, you can be upset at Israel. Go ahead and get, rid- get yeah. mad at them. That's no excuse. Like, there's there's no way that it's okay to do what he did. No. Oh, my no, God. No, it's absolutely... Noor. Uh, yeah. Noor. I'm mad at Noor. Yeah, you should be. No, no, Noor. No, Noor. N- That's bad. Yeah. Um, I just... Oh, God. I hate to, like... Like, Islam has a lot of problems. What? As, I know. That's a that's a bold statement. I, I, I know. As 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 a global religion, they are problematic. Yeah. We all know this. Yeah. And when you see a group, uh, a Muslim group that is trying to do outreach and trying to, you know, be moderate and uh, and work in their communities and and that they're against extremism within their own community. Um, you're, it, it's it's encouraging 
yeah. right? It's like, okay, there's some hope that this, that this really awful religion won't completely destroy the world. I mean, they're going to, but, um, <laughs> I don't know. Christians will beat them to it. I think, I think it's a, a joint effort. It is to be honest. Like people, they're both, the, they are all people of the book and, yeah. and it, as such, they're all doing a, a bang up job of just wrecking everything. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, but for there to be somebody who actually had found employment as a director oh. at one of these organizations and then in secret <laughs> is going online saying awful things that completely contradict what he does for work. Right. It just, it, it, it starts to pull, pull a, a, away any hope that I, that I might actually oh, you kind of just put. In, in one little corner of Islam because it, the bulk of it is just a disaster. See, what's to me, this is just more people being people. They're, human beings are basically just awful yeah. uh, at being human beings. Uh, and even the ones who are doing something good need to let up, blow off some of that bad people steam, I guess. And uh, yeah, by calling for death of all Jews. Yeah. That that's his letting off his steam. Yeah, I he's just think. he's just letting off steam. <laughs> By which I no. mean, like, humans are the worst. Yeah. Humans are fucking awful. Anyway, uh, <laughs> just I, I guess off some I guess I don't really have any other recent examples of yeah. him that would to support the the idea that humans are awful. So I shouldn't probably say it. Oh wait, please see all of the everything. Um, <laughs> I. Including my next story, uh, which is good news? Question mark. Oh, yeah. Uh, this kind of, this this came to us from a listener. Uh, this is from out of uh, of Indonesia, mm. where the Indonesian army, uh, you know, they've allow they allow lady soldiers, just like oh, we do here in this yeah. country. Uh, it's. I'm sure that that was a very a deeply controversial thing for them to do just in the first place. And that's also what uh, female soldiers like to be referred to as. Lady soldiers, or or they they also <laughs> sometimes enjoy girl soldiers, if you call them that. They really like that. Uh, anyway, uh, so, you know, it's it's progressive, I think, that the Indonesian army even has women in their army. Uh, however... They just got a little tiny, tiny bit more progressive hmm. when they stopped doing virginity checks on the women recently. Oh, God. What? Oh, God. Yeah. Like, like now. Now is when they stopped doing that. Up until now, they did what they called the two-finger check. Oh, where God. Where literally they would violate a woman by... Sticking a couple fingers up her vagina to make sure that her hymen was still intact. Oh, God. Uh, which, A, not a foolproof plan. Yeah. Even virgins can have a broken hymen. Yeah. And B, why the fuck do you need virgins to fight in your army? What, what, what does it have to do with anything? Legions of virgins. <laughs> Far more, far more terrifying. You know what I mean. As, a, as an army, if you if you kill one of one of their uh, army women, you go to extra hell because you killed a virgin, and virgins are uh, better. Oh, I think you might be onto something there. <laughs> and it, but, I mean, so what did the virginity test for men look like? Uh, right. Yeah. Right. Uh, you'll be shocked to learn <laughs> there was none. What? What? That's not. Oh, that's unfair. It they had like a double standard. It almost seems like they might have done. It almost <laughs> seemed it like you could. I I think if you worked really hard, uh, and you put the pieces together just so, you'd have to do a lot of research. But you might be able to make the case <laughs> but, that there was a double standard there, <laughs> and maybe sexism, and maybe some sexism, maybe. Uh, so there you go. Uh, the world got a little less incredibly awful. Um, how the, the here's the other thing: they're not the only ones who have done this. Of course not. It can this practice continues in Afghanistan, 
Egypt, and fucking India. Oh, God. India. What the fuck? Oh. So, uh, there you go. And also, let's let's be clear. It's going to take some time before every battalion commander stops this in in their own base. You know what I mean? Like, it's now the rule. What, the battalion commander? Was he the one who did it? I don't... I, I don't think so. But, uh, but I, you know, one would assume that a doctor was doing it, but I actually don't know the answer to that. Oh. I just, you know, I, I look, I'm baffled by people who even want to be in the military, to be perfectly honest. Hmm. Uh, but, who, man, the, you know, when, when, when you want to be in it so much that you're like, yeah, go ahead and stick them up there. Let's, uh, just, let me just prove this to you. That's horrible. That is crazy. Oh, Dan. All right. Um, I have a story from Turkmenistan. Oh, good. I was hoping to get the Turkmen's in. <laughs> the, the, uh, I don't know that I've ever had a story from Turkmenistan. <laughs> yeah, I don't in, know. In, this, in 10 years, this, I don't think I ever have. This may be, this may be a TGIA first. The Turkmen's are on the move. <laughs> well, uh, Turkmenistan... Obviously, a former Soviet uh, republic, um, so to speak, um, and the, they are a tightly controlled uh, society, uh, very authoritarian, uh, very Muslim. What? In one of the stands? I know. It's crazy. Um, but they, uh, they do not like uh, open internet access. And they have mm. a strictly locked down uh, internet in the nation. Sure. Um, and so, of course, people are like, well, I want to watch Netflix. <laughs> right. right. And there are ways around it. And one of those ways is uh, using a VPN or a virtual uh, private network. Right. right. So you can kind of uh, trick uh, the internet into thinking you're someplace else. Right. And then all of a sudden, your country's little firewall or whatever uh, will let, well, it's just circumvents the firewall. Right. And, uh, and so and something tells me that, you know, the beefy, uh, firewall of Turkmenistan might not be difficult to defeat with a VPN, with a VPN. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that's what people do. Right. And, uh, so it is, uh, illegal in Turkmenistan to sure. use a VPN. Uh, people have been arrested for having uh, VPN services installed on mobile phones oh specifically. Um, and uh, but just making it illegal has not shut down the practice. So they have they are now adopting a new layer of protection for their for their nation or national internet. Um, you have to swear on a Quran that you will not use a VPN. <laughs> <laughs> Like, are they going door to door? <laughs> That's when you sign up for the service, right? Oh my god! So, 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 like now, like your your cell phone store has to have a Quran on hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, okay, sign here that you're gonna, you know, your T-Mobile terms and conditions, and place your hand on the Quran. On Quran, please swear to Allah that you will not use a VPN. That you will not. That you will obey. Uh, Allah's terms and conditions. I mean, it probably is enough of a mind fuck to get a lot of people to not, right? Yeah. And, and I'm sure there's know. plenty of people who are like, well, fuck it. I want to watch, you know, Bridgerton. Right. Um, and <laughs> yeah, that's what they're that's, all they're after scrambling Bridgerton. for. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, this is from one uh, anonymous uh, internet user. Um, she says, uh, I waited for a year and a half after I filled all necessary documents and signed application forms asking to install Wi-Fi in my home. A year and a half, she waited. <sighs> um, I mean, clearly she's using Comcast, which is probably the first <laughs> right. mistake. Which, because... <laughs> yeah, because that's how long it takes them to get a tech out to your house. Uh, and now they say, I must swear on the Quran that I will not use a VPN but nothing is accessible without VPNs. I do not know what to do. Yeah, I'm guessing that like without the VPN, you get the state-sponsored news and yeah. like 
It's probably just shit. Two two streaming shows that don't actually stream yeah. well. And some Twitter knockoff that yeah, is exactly. really boring. Yeah. <laughs> Twitter stan. <laughs> oh my god. Well, there you go. Mm. Uh third third world internet, man. It's it's rough. <sighs> I, I don't know. know. They're probably not third world. Are we allowed to say the world? We now? don't we don't I think generally we don't. We just say developing uh, nations. Yeah, we like developing now. Um, and we are supposed to more broad, if you are going to go down that road, you have to include other nations in the first world, not just the United States. Well, I mean, if we were still, <laughs> because that's it, how it was originally. Well, there, there is that. Yeah. We're one. <laughs> Europe is two. <laughs> that's exactly. And everywhere that. else is three. That's what it was. <laughs> Oh my god. So it's a problematic system. <laughs> well, look, I didn't make it up. I did I didn't make America the greatest country in the world. It just happened that way. It's not my fault. I also love that we're country code one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> For the telephone. Wanna dial our country? Just hit that Number one. one. It's a, supposed to be a reminder. Yeah. How how many digits are in your country code? Because we just got the one. Yeah. And we were generous. We included Canada. That's because they don't even count. No, code, that's not generosity. One. That's you don't even count as a country. <laughs> you're just part of us. <laughs> you get our country. You're code. just literally our country's hat. That's what you are. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, one more story. Let's just get through this. Uh, you remember? You know Fisher Price, makers of of little plastic toys of various kinds mm. here in the <laughs> yeah yeah they, they're they're a big deal. Yeah. Uh, and they have all these play sets for kids. Yeah. Well, they've got like a, 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 a the classic farm scene. The, the farm the barn scene is a, and the oh, silo. Oh, sure. And, and the, all the various critters, the various animals. Yeah, it's and stuff. so much fun. Yeah. There's another scene that has a bunch of animals that they put out every year. It's the nativity scene. They do? Apparently. That kids can play with. That kids can play with. It's a uh -oh. little little kids, cute little plastic people and and animals and a you know, a manger and all of the various uh -oh. things. Well, this is an interesting story. Um Faithful America, which is an online Christian community, mm -hmm. is has has made a request of Fisher Price. Please, they ask. Don't make the uh, the I wanted to call it the first family, the holy family, mm -hmm. white anymore. Oh, every year the uh, you know clear. it comes out. You've got make them clear. Make them, please make them transparent. Can you make them white -er? <laughs> They're a little pink. I'd love it if they were just ghost Pure white. Pure white. That's, you can do like an eggshell. <laughs> No, uh, so like one, you know, they they would have the 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 so-called wise men, and you know, one of them was always dark skinned or whatever. Mm. But they're asking, you know, representation does actually matter, and this is a you know, an obviously liberal hippie Christians, not oh. not the good kind of Christians, right? Not the kind of Christians that have any influence, right? Right. Except that, you know, political correctness is a real thing and, and representation Fair. does matter. Fair. And uh, and so they're calling on Fisher Price to release, uh, you know, make, make them dark. Make them uh, time and place appropriate. Wow. Yeah. Well, um, I mean, all of them should be dark. Every person. Except Jesus. Jesus has to remain white. <laughs> the angel. Is, were, they, were they fighting? You can make that? the angel the white. The angel's what? Clearly, the angel. The was angel white. is uh, just yeah, white as a lily. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, them people folk, they need to be. They should be brown. You know what? And the sheep should be dark too. Fuck it. Let's just make everything black. <laughs> uh, no, I, I really That's actually the sheep. I'm looking at it right now. The sheep is blue. Or that at least doesn't make any sense. The face is blue. The 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 wool oh. is is white. But why okay. is the face blue? That's weird. That's, that's how they did back in the day. They just had some fun with it. Yeah, is what they were doing. Mm -hmm. uh, we will see. I don't hold out a lot of hope that no. uh, the Fisher Price will go with this. They may God. release multiple versions. Well, that would be interesting. They, just but whatever version works for you. But now there's this but pressure. See, there's a problem, and this it, there is a problem in. Repres like 
making representations of your God because you're always going to make your God look like you. Yeah. Right. And then you start thinking at some point that, well, God looks just like me, so I must be super special. Right. Not the fact that, you know, three generations ago, somebody made God look like you, so God would be more relatable or whatever, right? Right. And so or, it's or, like, or Da Vinci made God look like his gay lover. Right. I mean... That's like the Jesus that all of Europe has been look, lusting after for all of this time was was just Da Vinci's hot, sexy man. I mean, you know... Or was it Michelangelo? Probably but, Michelangelo. They both... It, it was, they both I mean, liked the guys. Yeah. Yeah. But... Um, I don't know where I was going. Oh, oh the, just the, the, the whole thing of like, you know, they, soon you forget. And then all of a sudden now that's the, that's one of the tools for creating your own supremacy. Right. Right. Yeah. Is that Jesus was clearly white. God right. is white. Right. So we're awesome. Right. Buddha is a Chinese dude. Right. Uh, God, yeah. Jesus is white. Mm -hmm. My God has to look like me. Yeah. And, and then two generations after my God starts to look like me. Uh huh. It's proof that I'm better. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see uh how Fisher Price uh handles this pressure. Uh and maybe we'll report on it if we yeah. if we see what happens. We should just like join in. Just to like Well we're doing like, it. Put 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 some press like like uh, I, I don't want it because I need it. I want it just to put them under the pressure. Yeah. And just like see what happens if they actually did release this yeah because be, it, there is going to be some very 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 upset evangelicals oh furious yeah you kidding me greg Locke is going yeah. to lose his mind yeah can we ladies and gentlemen if you're feeling frisky uh listening to this yeah. pause the show and write them an email <laughs> yeah that's yeah absolutely. right F find fisher price they won't be hard to find no you know, find there. There's tweet the, at him. the article is on religion religionnews.com. Mm. Tweet at tweet that article to them and just yeah. be like, "Hey, I support this." Yeah, let's uh, <laughs> apply some pressure. Yeah. I think that's amazing. Yeah, we should. We don't have a re really a stake in this game, other no. than I actually do believe representation matters. Sure, and I think that that's an important uh, thing. And right. you know, a little kid growing up Christian in this country, it's hard enough to grow up Christian. But growing up Christian and of color in this country is hard enough. Let's give it. Let's give them. Let's throw them this one. Or growing up Christian white and thinking you're so fucking special because right. Jesus is white. Yeah. Let's take yeah. them down a peg. Yeah. Because we know the facts. Right. So okay, I love it. I yeah. love it. Go write them. <laughs> Write them a, a thing. And then let us know that you did. You can write to us, <laughs> podcast at thankgodimatheist.com. Or you could call us and tell us about it. Yeah. The telephone number is 424-666-8442. Stick around. We have uh, some correspondence coming right up. Frank. Daniel. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but uh, an event happened yesterday. Really? That, that rocked the the country. I'm trying to think. I can't think of anything. What or happened? rather an event didn't happen yesterday, which was oh, that's that like yesterday it. was when Donald Trump was to reascend <laughs> to the presidency of the United States. Oh, uh, that's right. It was prophesied. The US military was going to do it. It wasn't yeah, it was prophesied 100%. Yeah. It was also uh it was also told to us by the my pillow guy. He he knew. <laughs> he had insider knowledge. His, I think probably pillow told him. <clears throat> QAnon was probably in on it. Mm -hmm. Uh we, we they had absolute knowledge. Mm. Uh they've missed a couple of deadlines mm. on this one, but that was the most that was that was the one they were sure of. Oh, okay. Um one of the guys who has prophesied that that this w that Trump was coming back was a guy named <laughs> Jeff Jansen. Now Jeff, so dumb. Jeff has recently been through some shit. He was fired from the Global Fire Ministries for uh, oh. some Jeff. quote poor moral choices. Jeff, yeah, oh. Jeff, come on, man, has a has ding dong. Isn't keeping it where it belongs. Uh, 
Maybe he was just drinking. No. Maybe he had a a little too much. Who knows? Of, of uh, I'm I'm yeah I'm, I don't know. I'm sure he probably just pissed off his boss. Oh, he wasn't subordinate. <laughs> yeah. He yeah. was. Yeah. Exactly. Bad Who knows? moral judgment. Anyway, he still he still holds that he is a prophet, and that his prophecy, which by the way he wasn't going no August, he wasn't. Mm. He mm-hmm. prophesied that, you know, this was back in January when Trump, first of all, Trump wasn't going to leave office. Trump, uh-huh. You know, there was no way that Joe Biden was going to be inaugurated president. Oh, it was unimaginable. There's no, God told him, no. Then God told him, well, don't worry, it's all a trick, he's coming back. Uh, Who, and that Jesus. was- Jesus. Jesus is coming back? No, no, Trump. Well, yeah, the same thing, same thing. <laughs> Trump, Jesus, equivalent. In this it's world. really bizarre that it feels that way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he said March. He wow. said Mar- he, he said April. He said anyway. Yeah, I don't remember that happening. Well, he, he in here, any of those instances. It didn't or okay, did good, it? Good. I don't know. Okay. Let's let Jeff Jansen tell us. God has not forgotten. Uh, there are many that are still standing on the premise of what's happening with uh, uh, President Trump. Um, as a matter of fact, I know for a fact that he has already been inaugurated. Uh, and um, I guess I can share that there was a general that was uh, March the 4th, uh, uh, 2021, uh, March the 4th, where he was actually sworn in as the 19th president of the new reformed republic of the United States going back to 1851 when everything was traded away in our nation. <clears throat> Don't have, one, have the time to get into that. But, uh, um, you know... I I do want to say this, because people get so caught up with, oh, Jeff, you said by spring we'd be dancing in the streets. That's right. I did say by spring we'd be dancing in the streets. Um, I did say that President Trump uh, would be president and is president, and he is president. But uh, you need to understand something as well. We need to understand that when the word of the Lord comes to a prophet, uh, the prophet speaks the word of the Lord. Things can shift, not the goalpost. People say, well, you're shifting the goalpost. I'm not shifting the goalpost. Except that it keeps moving. Right. That part. Oh, sorry, Frank. I I was actually just inaugurating myself, so I apologize (laughs) if I wasn't paying enough attention. It's all it takes to be a president. I I might need to to find a a general somewhere (laughs) to... I'm the... I don't know if you know this. I'm the president of... The United States of Danistan, which is the real name of this country, goes back to going, going 1994. That's right. I'm gonna say that's right. Yeah, uh, back back when we really lost our way as a country. Right. Do you? It was in the the middle of the, of of uh, Clinton's first term. Right. Uh, we knew it was just going the wrong direction. Everything everything was going so, the wrong so direction. So Danistan had to happen. Yeah. So I am the president, the rightful president of this country. Uh, it's just that nobody is acknowledging it. And th- don't worry. That's because I have a plan. Good. Um, Good. And, 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 and a deadline. Right. Yeah. Uh, you'll know <laughs> by uh, September 4th. Oh. That I am the real president of this country. I'm going to take over. Oh no, Dan! Uh, don't. September fourth is the I'm day. I'm going to be out of the country. I'm going to yeah, be on vacation then. But I'm going to be kicking you out of the country <laughs> because I'm I'm your main competitor. I for for I, uh, you because just... you have heard of uh, the United States of Frankistan, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you mean we, the Danistan mortal enemies? Yes, we actually date back to 1991. So we tr- <laughs> we I hate to say Trump. Uh, you were 1994, Danistan. Uh, I'm sorry, okay, Dan, well, look, Danistan. there's a there's a lot of uh, a lot of ins and outs, a lot of what have you's mm-hmm. uh, yeah. in in this whole international conspiracy. Well, I'll be returning to the country triumphant on September 11th. Okay, are you really leaving the country? Mm-hmm. Going on vacation. I told you this. Oh yeah, maybe you did. I just how do you? Yeah, we're the, going to Belize. Uh, that's what you think. <laughs> It, I can't believe we're going to be traveling during Delta, but yeah. we're, we planned it and we're doing it. But anyway, there you go. What a kook. Yeah. So the music is really um, uh, hypnotizing or something. It, like, it's, it's like it lulls you. It's and mesmerizing. It's that clap that 
just what was that clap i have no idea we, that was not us that's not our fault yeah that, that is uh that, that was a part of it. Jeff Jansen's fault. <laughs> All right. Well, we had some folks write into us. We uh, did. So I, I, we had a lot of people write into us. By the way, uh, we can't read all of everything that you guys write into us, but we sure do appreciate all of mm. your all of your missives. So That's keep it true. up. Um, this is from Rabbi Gruber. Uh, oh. We always love hearing from Rabbi Gruber. Yeah, for sure. I, and here's the thing. You remember last week we talked about an Israeli. Uh, gymnast who, who oh, won yeah. a gold medal who cannot get married in israel yeah because he's not jewish enough right you remember this i remember so this like story. like and we who, mentioned rabbi gruber yeah exactly this, and he his, does interfaith yeah exactly you know? uh so here's what here's what rabbi gruber had to say hi guys israel remains the only democracy that lacks freedom of religion for jews <laughs> Which is a delightful way oh, of putting wow, it. That's, and yeah, I, um, okay. that's amazing. The state religious apparatus is entirely controlled by the ultra-Orthodox. Having no civil marriage mechanism, everyone must go through the rabbinate. Hmm. As you highlighted, former Soviet Jews who make up around 20% of, the, of Israel's population are very much affected by this. Of the 900,000 who immigrated to Israel, 250,000 are not Jewish According to Jewish law. Oh, my God. Really? They're Jewish enough to have citizenship. Right. But not Jewish enough to be Jewish. Uh, how oh. that, that was me saying that. That wasn't Rabbi Gruber. Anyway, mm. he, he continues. However, they are not the only ones affected by this. Some people who are born from forbidden unions. Forbidden unions. Oh, wow. Are circumscribed under Jewish law as to who they can marry. Those like me who are descendants of the priesthood, cannot marry divorcees or converts. Really? Also, yeah. And that a, ain't that a bitch. Wow. Uh, also, since conservative and reform and even some modern orthodox conver uh, conversions are not recognized, often converts cannot marry other Jews. Oh, my God. The only option for these people is to marry abroad. Typically, Israelis will fly to Cyprus marry at city hall and fly back this is a nice money maker for the nicosia government and related wedding vendors hmm. then they may sub submit their marriage certificate to the ministry of the interior who must register them as married the mechanism uh this relies oh on God. the hague treaty of 1961 through which about 120 countries including israel and cyprus recognize each other's properly le issued legal documents Gotcha. Interestingly, sometimes if the couple wishes to dissolve their marriage, they still need to go through the rabbinical courts. <laughs> Most of the time, though, they would go through the secular court system. One final related tidbit, just as the rabbinate uh, with its separate state religious courts controls, uh, or say state religious courts controls marriage and divorce for Jews, an equivalent court system exists for Muslims. Oh. Just as with other court systems, the judges are appointed by the state and are state employees. So, yes, Israel actually has legally sanctioned Sharia law courts. Wow. Whose rulings are binding on Muslims in Israel in marriage and divorce. Wow. Well, we asked. Yeah. And, that is, and Rabbi Gruber delivered. God wow. Damn, Israel. That That's... You know, it's so that's fucked up. It's so and it's so needlessly complicated. Yeah. Right. Like, like, just just do it. Just let people fucking get married. Just fucking and let it be like just civil. Get religion out marriage, of right? the civil. Yeah. yeah. Out, of, out of legal contract business. Yeah. 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 You, you, oh you know, God. have it have it, the two different things. Have yeah. the religious marriage that, you know, the rabbis can get all huffy about. But. <laughs> But let people fucking just get married. I mean, imagine it, not everybody can afford to fly to Cyprus. You know what I mean? Like, I know not every I mean, so yeah. so no marriage for you. Um, I mean, it's not that far. How much could it cost? It's probably not that much, but yeah. like nevertheless, not everybody can afford it. No, I know. I, I'm being. Plus, how do you do it during a pandemic? You, you know. Anyway, uh, a lot of marriages on hold. Yeah, but not the Olympics. But not the Olympics. That yeah. that would be crazy. Yeah. Uh. Kerry wrote into us. Hi guys, this is this is based on the same uh, the the same 
story that I did mm -hmm. where I made a dumb joke. Uh -oh. And Carrie's calling me out and it's fair. Okay. So I'm I'm going to All just right. I'm just gonna take it. Carrie writes, Love your show. Uh, I'm often impressed with how progressive you are and how open you are to learning, so I feel you'll appreciate this feedback. Uh, in this week's podcast, you talked about the Israeli gymnast who won a gold medal in men's artistic gymnastics. I think you missed some context. Men's artistic gymnastics is really just gym gymnastics. Oh. Uh, they, those are the guys who are doing the rings, high bar, pommel, vault, parallel bars, and floor. Oh, okay. Uh, the Israeli gold medal winner, gold medal was the individual was in the individual floor competition. Okay, uh, it was actually a nail biter and quite a great competition. I don't expect people outside the gymnastics world to fully grasp how the sport works, but you said something that really needs to be corrected. You implied that most men in the sport are gay, and I did you make that did implication. Make that joke. You were you thinking of more sort of the ribbon twirling? That's what I was thinking of. <laughs> Which it's still not okay. It's still obviously not. I, I don't think men even do that. I don't know. <laughs> Rhythmic Dan, gymnastics how, is that what they call dare it? Dare you? <laughs> Why is the word artistic in there? That's not my fault. <laughs> Look, I'm yeah, very I mean, clearly if a man has an artistic inclination. Listen, I he grew up must be gay. I've been doing theater since I was eight. <laughs> I know the stereotype, okay? If you're doing theater since you're eight, you know that artistic equals gay for men. That's just yeah. how that works. <laughs> uh it was a dumb clearly joke. Clearly does not. Uh yeah, it clearly does yes. not. And it yeah, was do exactly. it was just a joke. Uh, Kerry goes on here, and and I think that this is an important point. So I'm just going to make sure that we that we get to it. Mm. Uh, the problem is that it feeds into the toxic masculinity that has been surrounding men's gymnastics for years. Mm. It is an extremely physical, physically challenging sport. Yes, I think that much is clear. If you've ever oh, seen oh a male, a, yes. a, any gymnast, yeah, you know that these people are insanely powerful athletes. Yeah. yeah. Um, but because most people in the U.S. think of it as a, quote, girls sport uh, by people who don't follow it closely, many boys and men are harassed and bullied and several drop out because of that or never even get started to avoid the stigma. NCAA schools have been dropping programs left and right to the point where they are now there are now only about 13 left in the entire country at the collegiate level and many clubs really? who are uh, at one time offering boys teams have closed. Really? Yeah. Wow. And I think that that is that that is a deep, a real problem. Uh, yeah. It's not, you know, we're just trying to have fun. I made an offhanded goofball comment. Yeah. Uh, and and I do. I apologize. I don't think it was right. I think that I th I think fuck that. Uh, I, you know, plenty of gymnasts probably are gay, and who the fuck cares if they're gay or not? Like that's not. There's no. There's no point to even pointing it out. Mm. They're just athletes doing amazing things, mm -hmm. and uh, and and yeah. So mm. Mm. I regret I regret the joke. It is retracted, uh, and uh, and I am duly chastised. But those theater guys, gay as a May Day, <laughs> the lot of them. That that much is true. Yeah. I can confirm. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about all of these uh, these. Uh, 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 gymnasts, but can confirm uh, every actor <laughs> super gay. Uh, all right, hi Frank and Dan. I just want this is this is uh, signed by an atheist librarian. All right. Uh, this is about. Do you remember we talked a little bit about Amish, or not Amish? Sorry, about Christian romance novels. Oh yeah, yeah. Although Amish romance novels would be a great genre. Uh, we had multiple listeners write in to let us know that they exist. Really? That's why I said it. I'm, I I oh, accidentally wow. was... Yeah. I, oh, I, wow. That's amazing. I spilled the beans on that. Uh, <laughs> just wanted to write in and comment on your segment about religious romance novels. As someone who grew, who grew up uh, super Mormon... Sorry, my brain just uh, had a little bit of a glitch there. Uh, I was convinced during my teen years that I could be more righteous slash closer to the spirit by only reading Christian and LDS fiction. So I do have some experience with the topic. Mm -hmm. In addition to your regular Christian novels like that of Francine Rivers, I've definitely heard of that person. And uh, there are also 
Mormon romance novels by way of authors like Anita Stanford and, yes, even Amish romances like An Amish Surprise by Shelley Shepard Gray. <laughs> I don't want to know what the surprise is. No, you definitely don't. It's a barn. <laughs> <laughs> Typically, the, book, uh, the books include, quote, wholesome romances where one or both of the characters convert to Christianity or Mormonism. Oh, God. Uh, and, the most, and the most a reader could hope for was hand-holding and chaste kissing, which that's a little too much for me. Chaste kissing, yeah, okay. Hand-holding, come on, mm -hmm. you guys. Leave room for the Holy Spirit, will you? <laughs> As a librarian, these books have their audience, and I continually admire the sweet old ladies who check out a dozen of these books per week and read them all in the seven-day period. Wow. As for romance novels in general, there is a big movement within the community to be more diverse... And while it has gotten better, it still has a long way to go. Romance readers are some of the most avid readers out there. Huh. And and volume of uh and volume of romance novels published every year is astounding. There huh. you go. I think that that's kind of nutty. We should do some atheist romance novels. They would just be uh romance, romance novels. novels. They would just be sexy. Then, yeah. Maybe it maybe it would be a little nerdier. I think it, that's there has to be like some sort of science lab involved. <laughs> they, they, some they, technician falls in love with yeah, has a brooding sort of they a burning desire. They for, discover a, a, a mutual love of of Carl of Sagan, some specific protein that they both study. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's called the protein study. Look for it coming out in your pulp section. Soon enough, everyone. Soon. Uh, and finally, just a couple more. Uh, we had some people write in some more foundations that they like for people oh, great. to donate yes. to. Uh, Kate wrote in and said, one of your listeners recently mentioned that they stopped supporting the charity World Vision. Uh, we already got through that. Uh, listen, if they want to go to the child sponsorship route... Children International serves kids in Zambia. Pearl S. Buck International has recently started a program in Kenya. Hmm. Also, Moja 2, that's M-O-J-A-T-U, I don't know how that's pronounced because I don't know what language it's in, is a small sponsorship organization in Texas hmm. which helps kids in Kenya pursue their education. Nice. Uh, so that's good. Uh, Cynthia wrote in to mention Foundation Beyond Belief. Yeah, that's always a good one. Yep, that's a great one. Uh, Rob wrote in to say, yes, Doctors Without Borders, but also Engineers Without Borders. Really? Which I which actually makes a lot of sense. Uh, Rob is pointing out that sometimes the engineers can solve things that make it so that they don't need the doctors. Oh, brilliant. Because, yeah. you know, clean water solves a lot of the problems that Doctors that's... Without Borders would, would have. So Didn't. Did, never even heard of that one before. yeah i haven't that's either they fantastic. get a lot they get you know sort of less uh play but i think that's actually really helpful and yeah. and more long term yeah. uh, in terms of solutions so ah, i think that's wonderful. great all right well we've had some folks give us their money and that's we one have. of our favorite things i'm going to start us off uh donna uh she sent in a lovely email hi thanks donna and she also sent us a, a a lovely donation we're gonna we're, i'll give her with, with the one-time donations it's hard it's hard to know what priesthood to give yeah, her yeah yeah i'm gonna I'm, I'm going to uh ordain her a teacher excellent well thank you donna uh and uh, congratulations on becoming on having magical a, powers a, a, a teacher in the ironic priesthood uh we have some other new holders of the ironic priesthood who, who we've sold priesthoods to uh huh. Uh, that's what we do. That's what we do. We just right? sell you the ma we just take the magic powers and we just sell them to you yeah. wholesale. We're not just giving them away. No. <laughs> uh, anyway, we have four new deacons this week, Dan. Whoa. Uh, we have Tara, Darren, Word of the Broad, and Lauren. Okay. Uh, so thank you to the four of you. And we have a new elder, Ooh. Well, someone who qualifies to be an elder, based on the the their the uh, level of support. Sure, but um, ha who has um taken on their own title? Oh, they've, which they've I, put in a special request. This is a really good title. Uh, First counselor of the Relief Society, Craig. Craig. Okay, 
the Relief Society. Yeah, Craig's gone the yeah. opposite way. For those of you not familiar with the Mormon uh, power structure, yeah, the Relief Society is the lady group. <laughs> yeah. So Craig now has all of the powers that Mormons don't give to women. Congratulations! And he opted for not taking on the horrible responsibilities of being <laughs> the Relief Society <laughs> president. That's wise. Which Craig, Craig really threaded just, the needle perfectly, yeah, I think. No, that, well done. That, uh, awesome. Congratulations you, on your calling. Please yes. make us a casserole. <laughs> Toot sweet! <laughs> and, if you, uh, and if you'd like to join these kind folk, you can join them uh, by going to thankgodimatheist.com and uh, clicking on the support tab. Um, your, your support goes a long way Yes, in, in, in keeping the show up and running. It's the only thing that does keep the show up and running, so we sure do appreciate it. Uh, and a lot of people have expressed that they're, they're that they're finally kicking in, in part to help you uh, recover your home. Oh, that is the sweetest which thing. Is, which is delightful. Uh, and, Frank, and Dan, Frank, Dan actually saw it this week. It's it's a disaster, you guys. <laughs> they, it was like the home was designed to be destroyed in case of flood. In case of flood, please ruin everything. And boy, it's, did it ever. It's epic. It, it just keeps getting worse. <laughs> we just added the, the bathroom on the first floor to the destroyed list. Oh, They'd missed it. They'd missed some moisture in the wall. Oh, we found it because yeah. we bought one of those little meter things. Mm -hmm. And we were like, wait. And so now that bathroom's getting ripped out. Fun for you. So, <laughs> yes, uh, save Frank. Contribute to the save Frank and, fund. Yeah, and guys, like, we're, in, we're insured. Yeah. So we greatly, greatly shut appreciate up, it. Shut up! <laughs> They're giving money to us. Shut well, up. I mean, I, I guess there's a deductible. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> anyway, uh, thanks to everybody. We got one more person to thank. We do. Or do our, we have two people to no, thank? No, we have our top donor. Okay. The one and only, our Lord and Savior, Demonio. Woo! Well, Frank, Dan, the uh, I don't know if you've heard about this uh, global <laughs> pandemic that we've got going on. Oh, I mean, that I hadn't. We're, we're putting on a, on a, a fun little pandemic here. And oh, uh, God. we have the ability, we have the tool to completely eradicate it. End it now. It could be done. Right. It could be done by now. In much of the world, yeah. I think there's still a lot of vaccine that needs to be produced and sent out to, you know, developing well, countries and countries, but, you know, but like here in the first world, as we like to call it, uh, yeah, it, we, at least the United States and my, like a lot of the world, it could be completely done. Yeah. And yeah. then, and then all of the vaccine could be devoted to the rest of the world. It, we could have this thing over with. We're nowhere near. Well, because us first as well. Right. Like, yeah, you know, of course. America first. No, but like obviously, like uh, it, 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 it. Yes, you're right. This, this, we, they're, they're, this could be handled expeditiously, right? Quickly. But people are fighting it yeah. uh, for for really good reasons. Those reasons being that uh, the politicians have said have have, have politicized the idea. Well, and, and the internet didn't help. Yeah. Conspiracy theories have not helped. Right. People have discovered in the world of the internet that money is to be made mm -hmm. by countering good things. Yeah. And so, yeah, this vaccine is uh, is there. It's safe. It's good. It works. And a lot of they people... They are good. They work. Right? Oh, yeah. There's so many vaccines. Yeah, multiple this, vaccines. This has been a miracle of modern science and modern resources. Yeah. The, 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 like, the effort, the heavy lift that happened to get these uh, vaccines developed, tested, approved. Right. Right. Like, like this was amazing. It was it was it was amazing to to watch and how quickly it was done. But Frank, it wasn't a real approval. <laughs> it was only an emergency approval. Fucking hate that one. Doesn't count. Yeah, I know. Uh, it counts. Everybody it counts they, so they much. Did, they did all of the same testing. Yeah. They just got rid of the. Anyway, okay. So here's the thing. We got a whole country. Where uh, I mo 
most people are actually still on board with the the vaccine. Some people mm. are hesitant. Uh, some people are, but there is a group of people that are refusing. Yeah, they will not take it. We've heard Greg Locke. We've heard a, a yeah. lot of these pastors, and it's driven a lot by pastors by religion. Yeah, yeah. and I mean it is interesting. Delta it, with the surge of Delta, there has been an uptick in people getting vaccinated. Yeah, because people are dying. Yeah, because people are now like scared again yeah. i guess yeah. which if whatever it's going to take don't like get just, in a car yeah. accident in florida because you're no kidding you're just yeah. done or in louisiana they, there's no beds there's no beds here i know the, the the icus are full i know it's insane i'm so mad about it anyway a lot of companies uh and schools are starting to say uh, you gotta be vaxxed mm -hmm. to to work here to to attend here yeah. you gotta you just got to. Mm -hmm. And then a bunch of, uh, and then comes the question, because in these United States of America, we have religious freedom here. Mm. And so there's a question of religious exemptions <laughs> for people who have a religious uh Objection, objection to, yeah. to to getting the fucking vaccine? A newly found religious objection. The, every right. one of these bastards has, is now immune to measles, mumps, rubella. Yeah. Like, yeah. this is new. Yeah, their None, children are not getting the chicken pox. None right. of these, like, they all got, they're all vaccinated against yeah. stuff. Yeah. But they were, but... And the thing, so like what we know is that Jesus never objected to vaccinations before, yeah. but Jesus objects now, according to a lot of these people. And so now we've got companies and, uh, em employers, uh, yeah. we've, and schools wrestling with what do we do? Because, you know, if you say nobody has the right to just fire a gun willy-nilly about mm -hmm. and someone says well my religion says i have that i can do that right what do you do i mean if it's a gun it's pretty obvious what you do you just say well your religion is wrong and you still don't get to do it mm -hmm. but for some reason when it's the same thing yeah there's still a danger this person is endangering the literal lives of other people of the people around them yeah uh it becomes a question it's just uncertain. It's just, I don't, we don't know what to do. And it is uncertain because, you know, the, uh, the, the, the law in the U S is a little tricky. Mm. Every, in all, many parts of the world, it's tricky when religion gets involved. Yeah. But basically don't we have to get QAnon fully officially recognized as, as, as a the, religion at this point? Like, I feel like, like because the, these, like, like I said, you know, these are newly found religious objections to to vaccines. And w please show me in scripture, right? Yeah. Please show me in your tradition. Please show me the practice that up to this point you've you've objected to vaccination. Right. right. Like, okay, you if you can show me that, right? Like I, I guess in this, in effect, if you are a Christian scientist, right? Uh, and that's not a scientist who's a Christian, but you know, right. That but sect a, of Christianity, a member of the church yeah. cr of Christian science, right. Where they object to medical intervention and whatnot. Um, then, like, I guess you actually have a claim to it, mm -hmm. right? I don't know whether it's a valid claim or not. Um, but you, but, but very you least, actually have a foundation, right? There's in, a, there's a history of religious it. tradition, Right. Of objecting to it, right? This new, all no, you don't get this. This I, you do is, not get a religious exemption. It is this. outrageous, and and you're right to point out the newness of this. Yeah, and the fact that I think here's what I think. I think in order to get this objection, mm -hmm. in order to get this exemption, right, you should have to say, you should have to renounce Christianity mm -hmm. as your religion and take up. Take on QAnon. QAnon or, 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 you know, 
Trumpism. Yeah. Is your is that's your religion. Well, what if they just said that like Jesus um ever since the crucifixion Jesus doesn't like needles. Um <laughs> that like, you know, he just the, the, he ha- just, having nails hammered through his hands. Anything piercing is just, just doesn't he's just it was a traumatic experience. Okay, well if you show up with earrings, you're out. <laughs> And a lot of these places are like, you know what, we, uh, you know, a lot of these places are actually setting up protocols where, uh, where by if you want to do the objection, you have to like show a provenance of oh. your religion where this has been a thing. Oh, okay. Or and you have to make like there are like s- a series of steps that you have to do, but it's just so dumb that they have to, that that they uh that they have to go through this process you know what i mean like you have to hire a lawyer or a team of lawyers <sighs> you have to pay money to say to figure out what's it what's okay to do what's okay to require and what's not you know i one of the things that i think is nice is that uh here in utah anyone people making that claim are kind of screwed just again mm-hmm. recently this week the Mormon church came out again and said, we strongly, you know, they sent, they sent an, a letter, an email to everybody, to all of their members saying, Hey, really fucking do this. Wow. Get the, get the vaccine or rather, sorry. We strongly effing do this. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Please effing do this. Uh, and there was, I think the Tribune, Salt Lake Tribune, that uh-huh. is, uh, had an article this last week about um sort of mormons uh a lot of mormons still just don't they're not going along with it Be- they're not because their real attention. religion isn't yeah. mormonism anymore yeah, yeah we've been saying this but like this is the shocking thing about this moment in history mm-hmm. people's religion is not their religion yeah their their political identity is their new religion yeah, a, and it yeah. is what they find most important and they will abandon any religious leader hmm. who who goes against them like the literally the the first the the letter signed by the entire first presidency of the mormon church so like no longer is it the church saying it because at first it was the mm-hmm. church saying it and people were telling themselves well that's not the first president when so, i hear it from the first president yeah see, when when it's like when it's the prophet yeah when it's not it now it's just a guideline it's just a it's it's just a suggestion mm-hmm. and unfortunately it's still just a suggestion but they're saying they say they literally say in in this letter to church members around the world a they acknowledge we are fighting a war against the ravages of COVID-19 and its variants, an unrelenting pandemic. So they say in no uncertain terms that there is a pandemic, which shockingly you apparently have to say. (laughs) And then they actually say to limit exposure, we er urge to these viruses, we urge the use of face masks in public meetings uh, whenever social distancing is not possible. Uh, to provide personal protection from s- such severe infections, we urge individuals to get vaccinated. Ugh. They should make entrance into the temple contingent upon. I, maybe they do. You know, there should be a question don't. now for the temple recommend. Yeah. Are you vaccinated? Yeah. Do you have? You, and you have to show it. Well, yeah. no. They take they take you at your word. Yeah. You know they they which they shouldn't. They shouldn't. But Everyone knows. You know. Mormons are liars. Everybody's liars. Everybody's a liar. Everybody lies. Uh, but no, I mean, if they actually, like, they need to start, like, being serious and tacking, like, like their highest, most holy place, right? That it's like, to do that, you have to have done your civic duty right. and have been vaccinated. Yeah. Unless you have a medical reason. Right. Which is legitimate. And but the whole point your here. Your dumb QAnon or pseudo religious objection no that doesn't count and the whole point here is that like yeah we need to protect the people who have a medical reason why they can't do that right. and the only way we can do that is if everybody else does it exactly yep i don't i just don't I, I i mean we've said it maybe too many times but i can't i can't wrap my head around it why people's religion is no longer their religion like these people, their 
their their current religion is something that, because it is about identity. It's about personal identity. Yeah. And it's about and their enemy is no longer Satan. Their enemy is liberals. Right. Yeah. I mean, the obviously the political movements have money and resources to you know to propagandize to pro yeah to you to to use the you know facebook and and whatnot the online the social media and their news to, agencies to use to, like to manipulate fox right? news oan and, and there's that right but the the reach of it and the way in which that echo chamber just fully fully works is because of social media yeah you know, like Fox News all on its own. Yeah, it's bad. My parents don't do social media and they have crazy ideas. So obviously, yeah, just the news works, too. But it's it, it's like but but there it's an assault on all fronts. Yeah, and it's it's wherever they can find and meet you. It's there, you know, um, and and so that politi yeah, of course, the politi politization you I think I put too many. We know there was like a T in there. That's we know what L you meant. That didn't get said. But, yeah, um, it's fine. <laughs> we don't have to say all of words. <laughs> we can get away with. We can miss a few letters here uh, and there. It's fine. Me and my mush mouth that I. <laughs> it's a pandemic. You can't say all of words. <laughs> I just don't have the time. <laughs> Uh, anyway, anyway, listen, here's what I would love. I would love for people to write into us, call into us and tell us, because look, we talk about Mormonism a lot. It's, it's, you know, we, we, you sculpt from the clay that you've got. Mm -hmm. Um, but I want to hear about what's surprising you guys out there with, with the religious folk around you. Cause Mormonism, these fuckers are devout. They until, were. until they're not apparently they were, and they're not anymore and we've never seen that before yeah in our lifetimes that has never been the case it is shocking to us tell us your deal mm. talk to us about your people because mm -hmm. it's got to be something similar in other in other religious traditions uh, so I want to hear about it you can write to us podcast at thank God I'm atheist.com or call and leave us a voicemail message the telephone number is 424. 666-8442 Hey, go to the Facebook page Facebook.com slash TGI Atheist We're growing that group That that people We're growing our following uh, We might actually use it someday So <laughs> please click the like button It's important uh, And if you'd like to join one of our two Online forums Our members only lounges yeah. You can do so by going to ThankGodImAtheist.com Slash members only and then there's links over to facebook or to discord whichever yeah. one suits you uh better maybe yeah. both do whatever you want do just make your life great uh thanks so much to the red rock hot club for the use of their music and thanks to gordon johnston for the use of his music and thanks to all of you dear friends for tuning in we sure do appreciate you thanks guys bye-bye